In this video, I interview a veteran contractor on the East Coast in the DMV area. We talk about things like ductless systems, heat pumps, the new refrigerants, as well as uh, system sizing and ductwork sizing and a host of other things that are important considerations uh, when picking out the best HVAC for your home. But this is actually just a short version of a longer interview. So if you're interested in checking out the long version of that interview, we will make sure to link that at the end for your convenience. We hope you enjoy. You mentioned the American Standard um, 20 series or, or the 20 series system, the Platinum mm -hmm. line. Um, is that your favorite system or what is your favorite system that you guys install a lot of that you really like? That's my favorite system. Um, so I have had uh, three homes where I've put a Platinum 20 heat pump in working. Two of the homes worked with um, high efficiency gas furnaces as well. Uh, the reliability of those systems is pretty incredible. I mean, the both, so uh, I still have two two of the systems um, that have been in, in place for about five years now with no problem. I just swap my filters. I rinse off my outdoor unit twice a year. I and mean, that's really about all that I've been been needing to do. Of course, I do the normal checkups that, that my, my team would do, but it, I've had no problems, no nuisance issues, nothing big, nothing little. It's been great. My previous home, um, and I'm still in contact with that homeowner because I installed all this equipment there and we maintain it still. It's been in place there now for 18 years and still has had zero issues at all. I mean, nothing. No capacitors needed, no contactors needed. Nothing has been needed on, the, on these systems uh, because they're so reliable. And then there's the comfort aspect. Uh, they maintain temperature so precisely. So the unique thing about uh, an American standard inverter heat pump is that it has 750 speeds built into it. So it's giving you precise comfort on both a temperature and humidity level. Uh, you can set not only your temperature, but the humidity that you want to keep it at for the summer months as well. Uh, so it just provides such optimum, pure, pure, precise comfort when it comes to, to its operational characteristics there. The other neat thing is that especially in the summertime, it's it's generally going to run at about 25 to 30% of its total capacity. And I think that's why it's got the, the longevity and it's not having any issues. It's less wear and tear on the system. It's not working as hard to maintain comfort in the home. So it's pretty impressive, actually. Right on. And because a lot of people, you know, they will have that um, thought about, you know, they don't want to buy a fancy system because if it's fancy, it must break down a lot, right? Because we know it's like you go out and buy, a, a, I don't know, like a fancy uh, German car. It's not necessarily the most reliable, <laughs> but it might, go fast. it might go fast, but you don't want uh go fast in your house. You want reliable, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So 18 years, that's pretty good. Do you have people that are have concerns with the uh, refrigerant phase out, like customers that are concerned with the new refrigerants? There's, um you know, R32, R454B, they're both like, quote unquote, mildly flammable. If you watch the videos on it, um, like you literally have to hold a flame to it. And if you remove the flame, it won't continue igniting. Um, also, fun fact, I didn't even learn this until this happened, but I guess 410A is actually 30% R30 or 50% R32 already. So it's already part of that blend. Like, what would you say to a customer that's either on the fence um, and, and doesn't want the new refrigerant and wants 410A or someone who says, hey, I you know, only want the new stuff, what would you, uh, what are you hearing from customers or what are kind of the trade-offs? Yeah, it's really, it's been a mixed bag. So uh, yet another great question from you. Um, what what I've been able to, to ascertain thus far are newer buying public. So the younger homeowners, the people that are new to what it is to maintain a home and have to have these responsibilities or replacing HVAC or water heaters or whatever have you, uh, they are new and so they're experiencing this refrigerant change for the first time compared to my older clients who went through the phase out of r22 to 410. those clients are used to it they already went through it once or at some point and they understand that there's different types of refrigerants um the newer ones definitely have shown a concern for the flammability aspect of things but education will supersede that fear and so being able to talk with them about it and to your point you know 410A is 50% uh, of R32, and our, ironically, 60% of 454 is R32. So all this blend is already existing. There's already refrigerants in use that are flammable, more so flammable than what we're going to be dealing with. And those are refrigerants you'll find in a refrigerator. People oftentimes just don't know. And if you can tell them why and explain to them the safety aspects of things, you can really tamp down their fears and get them to understand that it's going to be okay. We're going to be all right. Not to mention that there is technology that's being utilized in these newer systems 
that have a mitigation system built into it. So in the event that there's any kind of a refrigerant leak, there are sensors that are going to detect this and immediately shut down the system and turn on the fan to get the air mixing. Because the what we know about these mixtures, these chemical mixtures that make up these refrigerants, they dilute quickly. And so if we can blend it with a lot of other air, then its flammability reduces to almost nothing. So um, I'm not concerned. I've been in HVAC a long time. Um, I feel like our industry is really taking this seriously and they're putting a lot of education out there for the buying public, technicians, business owners. The OEMs are doing a really great job of letting us know what's going on out there in the field and, and what they're seeing in their test labs. So if there's anything I could say to the public, don't worry, you know, don't, don't fear it. Um, it's going to be a benefit. It's, it's helping with global warming. It's going to be an efficient refrigerant. It's still going to operate the same way that you've experienced. So just just trust in our industry and we're going to take care of it. Yeah, no, it's an interesting point you mentioned about the refrigerators too, because I think I was looking at my label the other day, just like stumbled on it out of curiosity. And I don't, don't some of them have like butane in them or like, yeah. yeah. Which yeah. butane is what's found in lighters for anybody yeah. who has a lighter. So yeah. yeah, and that's highly flammable. That's not like that's not like R32. That's like that's a because overseas, one of the refrigerants we get asked about a lot is R290. Because one of the products that I'm looking forward to is the air to water stuff coming here. It's not here yet, but that's propane. But you know, that's all contained outside. So even then it's it's kind of a non-issue. But no, interesting stuff. I always like getting people's opinions in the uh uh DMV, it's always hard calling it that because I still I think of the Department of Motor Vehicles just being right on the, on the West Coast. But, um, so um, but like in the in the DMV, I just picture like a grumpy lady behind the counter, like about to yell at me because I didn't bring the right form. That's my experience with the DMV. But uh, no, but seriously, uh, in uh, in the DMV, like in Denver, we run into, you know, I mentioned uh, altitude is is it's something that we deal with a lot so like if we're installing the system at 5000 feet you have to you know put in certain pressure switches if it's at 8000 feet we put in other pressure switches we also a 7 inch duct at uh, you know 8000 feet is going to be like a, a 6 inch duct at 5000 feet there's a lot of things that go into design considerations what's the biggest mistakes that you see made on system installations uh, in your region and is it you know airflow issues is it sizing issues um, is it not following best practices? I guess kind of walk me through what you guys see out there and what uh, you know homeowners should be aware of. Yeah, it's a little bit of all of that. And um, so one of the biggest problems that we probably find are s system sizing issues. And that's when clients have either had additions put in um, and it's not calculated in, or if it's an older home and it was predating uh, you know, a formal manual J load calculation being completed, uh, that's when they can get into some issues, especially with a lot of these higher end systems that operate way differently. You could end up having ductwork that's sweating everywhere just because the system's either too big for it or it's running too long at much colder temperatures and causing dew point to, to hit on the ductwork itself. So one of the things that we've got to actually mitigate that is a proprietary software that we use that actually captures, it, it scans a home using LiDAR and it can capture a 3D image of the home. It automatically sizes out everything. And then we can put in parameters what the elevation materials are, the uh, windows, um, what their U value is, our value in the walls. You know, we can punch in a bunch of parameters. And for you know, a manual J that used to take a, a day or two to complete, we can now complete that in about 15 or 20 minutes. It's accurate, it's ACA certified, so it can be used for municipal permitting, which we've actually utilized it for. And it's it, it just saves us a headache of putting in the wrong size system. And you're scanning that with an iPad or or, or like a, or how is it like a separate device or how do you guys? Um, yeah, it's use, using an iPad Pro. The cool. camera on that, that um, iPad has the ability to use LiDAR. And so it scans everything. It, it's pretty neat when you're scanning the walls, you can actually see everything getting lined out and then it's building a 3D image at the same time. It's even got a module where if a client wanted a ductless Mitsubishi system or something like that, we can actually put it on the wall and it'll show what its air distribution will look like in that space as well. So it's pretty uh, pretty neat. Yeah, it's very intuitive uh, and it's a great lifesaver for our client and for us. You know, we know, we trust the program and when we're using it, we know that what we're doing is gonna be accurate. And then we can easily set up our airflow profiles to accommodate the home and provide that client with long lasting comfort that's not gonna give them any issues. Awesome. 
Um, no, that's that's great. And then do you do you guys struggle with any of the same airflow issues? Like do you have poor duct work? Do you guys have a lot of flex duct out there? Do you have mostly hard pipe or what are you guys running into? Yeah, newer construction is going to have a lot of flex duct uh, on the upper systems. You know, if flex duct is going to be, well, if there's going to be any duct work that's concealed, it can't actually be flex duct in our, in our region here. Okay. Um, so we'll find flex duct up in, in people's attics. What we do come across more so over though is you know we live in an older area so dc proper um and the surrounding areas like arlington alexandria these were areas where we had ducted heating systems but no air conditioning and so some of the big problems that i see that the contractors do especially if they don't have the experience they'll go in they'll say oh you've got you've got duct work we can just install an air conditioning on top of the furnace and uh then they end up with a lot of issues they end up with a coil freezing up water getting into the furnace shorting out the circuit boards and some of the safeties in there, causing heat exchangers to prematurely rust and crack. And that's because that duct work was not set up for cooling. It was only set up for heating. And, and you know, go ahead. Yeah, Sorry. are you, no, you're good. I was just, and are you replacing the duct work or do you see like a lot of systems in attics or finished basements or what are you guys running into as far as like install considerations? Yeah, when we come across those kinds of situations, we definitely talk to the, to our clients about a duct overhaul. Cause generally speaking, I mean, well, not generally speaking, you have to size the system to the duct work to the larger load and air conditioning in our region is always going to have a larger load than the heating. Uh, it's just inevitable. So we have to modify that duct work one way or another. Now, if there's, if it's traveling through a lot of finished space, and the, the client is not really ready for all of that upheaval, we can do one of two things. We can either modify locally and add more duct work or more uh, ducting to the basement area where it's still kind of unfinished and we can get to a lot of walls and really balance that comfort out. Or at that point, we could deploy, uh, deploy a Mitsubishi system, you know, go ductless and, and kind of attack it from that angle. Nice. So you guys install a lot of uh, ductless in your uh, region as well? People like this? We do. We do. Yeah. DC in particular there's a lot i mean most of dc does not have air conditioning in the row homes and oh all, wow yeah it's wild it's it's kind of weird to think but uh it's all plaster walls you know yeah. you've got about a one and a half inch gap between the plaster and the actual cinder block that's joining them with their neighbor it's not like you can easily run ductwork everywhere and it's also dc so square footage matters and people don't want to run a bunch of ductwork where they're going to lose precious square footage because it could end up being you know while they're investing thousands to make the the home comfortable they're also losing thousands on the value of the home so that's where you can utilize a Mitsubishi system. You keep your floor space. You put the uh, wall units up or the floor mount units that actually don't mount to the floor. They just mount to the wall really low. Um, and their performance, you know, their performance houses. Those, those guys will cool and heat super, super effectively. So, and yeah. are, do you get uh, much requests for like installation of cassettes, or is the or do the ceilings not really allow them out there? Or it, it, there are some that do, um, okay. and there are some that don't. So the the wider row homes, the joist spaces upstairs will allow for that. Um, for the smaller ones, it's it's actually it's unique that Mitsubishi came up with a one way cassette. So yeah. The Most 14 range, inches, right? They're like, they're, yeah. they're very narrow. They're very narrow. Um, unlike a regular cassette that most people are used to that's going to distribute air in four directions, uh, the one-way cassette fits into a much narrower space. You can get it into a 14 and a half inch wide space. They've even got a smaller unit that can fit even skinnier spaces now. Um, but it's only going to shoot the air in one direction. Now, you can control the swing on it, and you can get up there and can control the sway but you're not going to have four definitive directions uh, of air distribution, but it's still very effective. Very, very effective. Yeah. Especially for cooling. If that's like in the ceiling on the top floor, I mean, you're hitting the heat where it's cooling the most. So that's, um, I don't worry so much about the direction in, in that instance, maybe yeah. for heating, I could see where four way would be more important, but um, no, that's, that's interesting. So we hope you found this content helpful. And if you did, please smash that like button and consider subscribing for the algorithm. And as mentioned earlier, there's a link to the long form version of that video popping up shortly. So make sure you check that out if you're interested. And if you'd like to connect with Dario, there'll actually be a link in the description where on how you can connect with him if you happen to be in the DMV area or one of the uh, metros that he services. And if you'd like to get a referral to a contractor in your area, that's literally why we created the HVACdopeshow.com. So there'll be a link in the description description for that as well if you'd like to request a referral to a contractor in your area and we hope you found this content helpful and if so we will catch you on the next episode